Hey guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to take a look at the five things that you should do as soon as you install your Linux desktop. All right, well, congratulations. You got your Linux uh, distribution installed. You took the time to go find out which one you wanted to try. You burn it to a bootable ISO, you made it through the whole installation process, and now what do you do? You've reached a functional desktop operating system that you can use. Now, what are the top things that you should do right away? One might be wondering. Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at that. We're going to kind of go over that. These are the things that you should do. You don't have to do it like you have to do it as when you do it, okay? But it's best if you do it right when you first when you first install your distribution. That is usually the best way to be. So the first thing you should do is familiarize yourself with your desktop and your user interface, right? I mean, you're new to Linux. You've never used it day one before, unless you might have tried it in a subsystem for Linux in um, Windows or maybe even a virtual box environment, whichever. Then you may not have to do this step. But if you haven't, then that's one thing that I would recommend you to do. And, you know, let's go ahead and take a look at a desktop real quick. We can kind of, you know, familiarize you there with that. With that. Okay, so here um, is my main desktop. What I have here is, this is uh, Arch Linux M EMP. It's one I'm going to be doing a review on. It's pretty cool. It is actually a very nice actual little arch based distribution you have three different desktop environments around that you can actually take a look at there is kde there's gnome and there's xfce now all of them are the most those are the three most popular out there all of them have the same essential tools available on the desktop environment however they are they're just a little bit different in placement and that would be that the panels may be in a different spot because they all use panels, uh, floating type panels. Like GNOME will have it at the very top up here, and in the upper left hand corner, you'll have your you have like your activity launcher, which will open up your application launcher. When you click on it, it'll be a full pane window that opens up and it has all your different apps in there. Or you've got KDE, which is very similar to your Windows setup. That's why I chose this one for you guys to see because this is probably one that you guys are more going to gravi gravitate towards when you're making that switch. And of course, it's you got your application launcher. You got some um, on the uh, on the far left. Then you got some pinned you know icons here on the bottom. And then you've got your your system tray. And then you got your uh, data, your your uh, clock and your calendar on the on the right far right hand side. Very similar to Windows. 10, okay, so that should be very familiar for you guys to use so so that is kind of familiarizing yourself with and if you haven't seen it i'm not going to go in depth on it but that is a brief look at it xfce has the same thing as kde what difference is the panels at the top and the application launcher drops down everything drops down from the top pretty much the same thing very easy to navigate very simple to do so that's one of the first things you should do obviously i mean is get in there get your elbows dirty figure out what's going on with it right so the next thing you should do is install any essential software or applications that you may need. I did a video recently on why Windows apps don't work on Linux. Explain. Okay, if you haven't seen it, put it in title card up here somewhere, you'll find it. But really, the reason why you need to find these applications and hopefully the way you did them is, is what I explained in that, in that video to do is if you know you're going to make a switch to Linux, and why not throw a virtual machine on your Windows computer and test drive a version of Linux that you want to that you want to test out in that virtual machine? So it's that way you already know which app you can test drive while you still have Windows available to you. You can test drive these apps to find out which ones it is that you would like to use and will make that migration over to Linux easier because that is one of the biggest things that people have a problem with in migrating over to Linux is the fact that they don't have or knowledge of open source software, which is available because that's what Linux operates. I mean, there are some proprietary ones out there, but as a majority, as a whole, there are open source, free and open source uh, uh, applications out there. 
that are available that are alternatives to Windows apps. And you got to get kind of familiar with some of them. Not, they're not always direct plug and play. They're very similar. They're usable. Um, some people just don't like the learning curve. So uh, that's what you want to do when it comes to the, to the install essential software. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So once again, we're back to the desktop. And right here in KDE, their software center is known as Discover. Now, in Discover, if you just click it to open it, um, you're, it's going to load everything. And in here, you're going to see how you've got everything already categorized. Like you got VLC, which is video player, GIMP, which or GNU image manipulation player, uh, program, uh, Chromium web browser, Firefox, editor's choices, or color paint, Krita, K Patience, which is a uh, solitaire card game, Caden Live, Yak Wake, you know, and then they've got other ones like 080, Super Tuck, Super Tuck Start. Super NES, Super NES 9X, which is an NES emulator. But then, of course, I've got it over here categorized on the right-hand side. And this is very similar to the um, GNOME software center for when you do the add or remove software. And it's as simple as just clicking on an app and then install right here up at the right top right-hand side. Somewhere you'll see a button for install. So that is a look at a package manager and how easily you can install software on Linux. So that is the second thing you should be doing. The third thing you should be doing is update your system. This is important. Now, granted, a lot of people coming over from Linux or coming over to Linux from Windows are, a lot of them experience that whole, I don't want to have to update my system every doggone time because a lot of people are stuck in infinite updates all the time you accidentally stop and you know unplug or, or power down your computer and boot it back up again or whatever and you're stuck in this update process so that can be horrible i mean this right here should say it all if you do the updates in linux you should be okay because one you don't get ever stuck in that update, updating hell you simply uh, choose to update and it updates and then it'll tell you to reboot. Sometimes you don't even have to reboot at all. That's right. Sometimes you don't. The only time it ever has to reboot is whenever it is a core system function that needs to be rebooted, such as like uh, updating Grub or something like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you could possibly do that on some of your uh, Linux distributions. Once again, the example is going to be on KDE as always, because that's what I've spun up here. So we're on our KDE desktop now, correct? Okay. So all you do is you open up your software center. There's two ways to do it, always. Uh, one is through the software center. And then right here, it's fetching updates. So these are all updates that need to be applied. Now, for the sake of the video, I am not going to apply these updates because I don't want to waste that kind of time. But these are all core system ones. Now, another way to do it is through your command line. Which, if we go here, you go to favorites, and then you go to, you know, not, doggone it, close out of that. I didn't mean settings. I wanted to get console. If it's there, it's not there. So, uh, what terminal do we have here? So, let's see. Go to system. Oh, right there. Extra. Okay. So, as you can see, it's got the NeoFetch made. I'll make this nice and big for you, as you can see. So, now you can see. Uh, would you like to update? Well, it's already asking you, would you like to update? I'm going to type no for right now. Okay, because in art, there is a simple command that you, that you only have to type. And that is going to be simply, it's going to be sudo hack, no cap, sorry. I don't know why I typed that. And why I typed auto. Sudo and then hackman dash capital S, lowercase y, and u. Or you can do yyu. Either one will work. And then you can update that. That's how you do that in uh, uh, Arch Linux. In like Debian-based, Ubuntu-based, it's sudo app update. Um, same, same type of command in terminal. Or you could open up their software centers. And you could update via the software. A lot of people initially are going to want to do that especially if they're new to linux they're going to want to do that via the, the software center because it's just more familiar for them 
and that's okay. Don't let anybody tell you in any forum or anywhere you're at that, oh, you're not a, a good Linux user if you can't update via terminal, okay? Next, you should back up your system. I don't have those installed. Well, let me see if I have those installed on my, on this virtual machine. If not, then I could explain to you what they are. Let's see. Let's look for time shift. And we do have it installed. A lot of distributions are coming with time shift. Okay. And this is a, a, uh, an application that you could use, um, to back up your stuff. Uh, there's another one called Deja Dupe that works really well. And then there's also another one called snap, but for the most part, this is time shift. And if you have BTRFS enabled, then you can set it up. So let's go ahead and click that. And, we'll, and right now this is my hard drive uh, where we're going to do the snapshot, which ideally you want to do it onto an external hard drive or a secondary hard drive that you have installed, never the same one that your operating system on. Because that kind of defeats the purpose if that hard drive gets corrupted. For the sake of just ease, I'm going to just go ahead and click through. I'm going to do daily. At, of course, you can see you can set up for pre, you know, if you want monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, or even every time you boot. Okay, you can set up the frequency that you want. And then you can include your home directory. That is important because that is where most of your files go that you're functioning and that you're making changes to in Linux or in your home directory, like your pictures, your Word documents, all that kind of stuff, your downloaded videos, your downloaded pictures, all that stuff is in your home directory. So yes, you want to include the home directory, but that will make these backups exponentially larger because once again, you're saving MP3s, MP4s, you know, JPEGs, all that. You're saving everything there. So if you just did the system, just the basic system where you can just re redo the system, like for the core system files, it'd be a whole lot smaller. But either way, so now we're going to click finish. And now this is what you're looking at. And right here is an arch rolling release. It's got a first time shift and you want to do, you want to, you know, create, you just hit create and it's going to create it. And there it is. So there's two of them right there. So you could roll back and you could on those by using a, a time shift on a live CD and it could fix your system. You just apply it to that hard drive. So that's a look on, on the thing, the next thing you should be doing, which is updating your system. And that is the probably in order of importance is what we're started with. Always do a backup after you do an upgrade anytime or an update because you want to save those changes. Otherwise you could be rolled back too far and things can break. So you got Deja Dupe and time shift, as, as I mentioned before, to do and schedule your automatic update. So lastly, thing you should do is find a quality Linux community. And that is very important. There's no argument on it because you can go reading a lot of things on online and get completely confused. Joining a nice, friendly community like Discord, like the Linux Tube Discord, that's one I could throw out there. You got Zany's Discord for Zany OS. You've got the Linux cast themselves. They have a great Discord as, as well. I mean, there's tons of places you can go to to get input for you. Also, you could try some of the forums for some for your distro that you just did. Be clear and concise when you go to these communities and let them know that you are brand new to Linux and that you're not sure exactly how to ask the question, but this is what you're experiencing. And be detail-oriented on what you did, what your, what your issue is that's going on, and, of course, you know, what you've tried to resolve it if you have tried anything. Otherwise, I just came right here right away, and this is what I did. Don't be afraid to ask the question because you can find a plethora of knowledge out there for you that is very helpful, and a lot of people can certainly want to help out and make your experience better. I know that in my Discord, in the Linux Tube Discord, which the link is in the description down below, many people have helped install things in our voice chat. They will walk you through it while you're sharing your screen. No word of a lie. It's amazing. And they'll even help you get set up to do that. It's almost like having a virtual support system for, you know, technician on kind of dial. Believe it or not, it's wild. It's such a great community over there. I've watched them. I've helped myself people through there. Uh, Sprungles, um, who's on the other content creator for the channel. He's helped people through there. I mean, it, it's amazing. It is amazing community over there. That's one I could I, I have fostered and, and I can vouch for 100%. So that's it, guys. You know, I mean, that is a look at the five things that you should do after you install your Linux desktop. Okay. I mean, be, fam be, be familiar with the desktop, install any essential software, update your system, set up a great backup system that works for you. 
also make sure that you do it onto a separate drive. That is a caveat that I think you should, you know, be aware of that, you know, don't make it on the very same drive that you are un unless you have to, because you don't have money to buy a second hard drive. But if you could find a way to back that up onto something else, maybe a cloud or something like that, employ the rule of three uh, for that. And you can certainly, you know, Google what's the rule of three when you're backing up on a computer. So I uh, employ the rule of three. Uh, and join uh, a good community and you'll be on your way to enjoying your Linux experience on your brand new Linux desktop with no problems. So yeah, if you have any questions or suggestions, comments, comment them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button and that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed. And as always, if you could join, join. But either way, I will tell you, y'all keep doing what you do. Keep on Linux and stay blessed, stay safe. And above all, I'll see you in the next one.